Hello, everyone, and welcome to our American Family Insurance Dream Bank page, where we believe in the transformative power of dreams and are committed to helping you pursue yours. I'm Jenna, and today I have the honor of introducing Amy Meyer and Kyle Smith. Amy Meyer lives in Madison with her husband, Jeff, and she works as the Connecting Lifestyles Coordinator at the church in Fitchburg. She's the author of Snapshots and Stories, Increasing Awareness of God's Faithfulness Through the Practice of Journaling. She's a life coach and speaks to various women's groups across the country and has led training in South Korea, China, Kenya, and Ethiopia. Kyla Smith lives in Verona with her husband, John, and his mom to Bailey, Emmy, Callington, and baby boy is scheduled to arrive in two days. Kyla has taught high school English for five years and is a certified yoga, yoga instructor through the Breathe for Change program. She coaches and trains people on the importance of using their breath to reduce stress and anxiety. I will turn it over to the both of them. Thanks, Jenna. We are so excited to be a part of this uh, venue on Dream Bank. Uh, we've done a lunch and learn in the past in person, and so this is a little bit different, but we're so glad that it's still able to work and that we can hang out uh, with you over lunch. Um, hopefully, we've got some folks uh, on live with us today. Kyla, do you want to say hi? Yeah. <laughs> hi, everybody. I'm super excited to be here with you all today and looking forward to um, just taking this next hour to really dive in a little bit more to this idea of pause, breathe, and appreciate. Yeah, so uh, we're going to get started. And uh, like Jenna said, um, we are a uh, mom and daughter team. So <laughs> Kyla is our oldest daughter, and um, it's kind of fun to to do these workshops together. We we have a lot of fun doing it. It's a little weird for her to be in her house and me to be in mine and not be side by side up front. But but what a what a fun way to still get to do this with you today. Uh, we, over the past uh, couple of years, have really grown in the understanding and, and enjoyment of what it looks like and the importance of and benefit of taking a pause, uh, breathing, and spending time appreciating, being thankful and grateful. So uh, we arrived at this concept. Our first workshop we did was Pause, Breathe, Love, and uh, really thought like this um, gratefulness and understanding the importance of that was one we could also do. So pause, breathe, appreciate is close to our hearts and we wanna share it with you. So as we get started, we would love to encourage you to drop some comments in the chat box. And as a way of getting started, uh, which one of these three words that are in the title of this, which one of them are you hoping to grow in the most? So is it pause, is it breathe, or is it appreciate? Which one for you uh, stands out the most? And no fair saying all three. You have to pick one. <laughs> Kyla, if you had to pick one today, what would you put in the chat box? Oh, man. I think for me today, in the context just of the day, uh, I think pause for me. All right. And then, as we'll talk about in a little bit, you know. Yeah, and three really they do go together, and so it's hard sometimes to separate them out. Um, because I would say the next one in line needs to be breathe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's um, it's fun. We were talking about this ahead of time. You know, will anyone put any comment in the chat box, or won't they? And we have no way of knowing. So um, we'll give you a few more minutes if you want to drop something in there. Uh, if you're just joining us, which one of these words stands out to you? Is it kind of most interesting or you want to learn more about or you want to grow it? Is it pause, breathe, appreciate? And we're going to define those for you and, and hopefully at the end of this really give you a, some real practical tools for how you can grow in those three areas. And um, But as we get started here, if you want to drop one in, that'd be great. and having seen none so far. <laughs> the good news too is this will be recorded. So for those of you who might be listening to this at a later time, I would encourage you to get a, a notebook out or a journal so that you can take notes. Um, and so the first thing you can write in your journal would be 
uh, which one of these words do I want to grow in more? Is it pause, breathe, or appreciate? And those of us who are, and those of you who are joining us live, that same um, recommendation would apply to you in terms of just grabbing something maybe where you could um, jot down some personal reflections as we move through this. We'll have a little bit of space um, for that personal reflection. All right. Well, Kyla, why don't you take us to the next? Perfect. So the next thing we're going to do is we're really going to just dive into this idea of pause and what it means to pause. And we've we've sort of defined it uh, in three different ways. Um, and you'll find that they're similar, but uh, we've kind of differentiated between these three. And so the first pause maybe is something where in the heat of the moment, you are interrupting the action or the speech briefly. So maybe it's this idea of breathing, taking some breathing space, taking five, having an interlude. Um, this other idea of pause is to be actually stopped in your tracks by a moment of gratitude, awe, or appreciation. So a lull or a halt or an interruption to what you're doing, but because of this gratitude, awe, or appreciation. And then the third one is this idea of taking a more prolonged respite or hiatus. And so to illustrate that for you, so this is really to illustrate that first idea of a pause, right? So like when we have all these things going on, maybe when we're overwhelmed, um, I'm a mom, like was mentioned earlier of almost four. And so some of these things really apply to me today. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of context to what I was doing before arriving with you all today. Um, we're doing work on our house. And so I had plumbers in the house. I had some some gentlemen helping lay some tile. Um, my husband was on a Zoom call. Um, my kids were running around and fighting. Uh, I've got a, a baby that's coming in two days. I've had some weird health issues. And so I'm, I'm wearing a, a heart monitor today. And everything was just like, Bah! And so I walked down here into my space and I was like, "Ooh, I need a pause. I need to step away from everything. I need to take five, right? I need, I need that space. So our second idea of pause is things that stop you in your tracks really because of awe or gratitude, right? So for us, we really have identified this as like acts of nature really have us stop and take pause. The other day I was on an evening walk and I watched the, the sunset and then the moon rise and I stopped in the street and I was like, whoa, this is pretty cool. And so this idea of sometimes in our lives we need a pause or we find ourselves in a pause simply because of what's surrounding us. We'll dive into this idea of taking a longer respite or pause here in just a second, but something that we felt couldn't go unaddressed is this idea of what we're kind of calling a pandemic pause, right? Like how timely is it that we're talking about pausing and breathing and appreciating in a time where we collectively as a nation, um, as a world really have been sort of forced to go on pause and you know thinking about what our lives looked like back in March when some of us were were actually really kind of welcoming that pause right like we were making sourdough bread and we were on Marco Polo sending cute videos to our friends and we were doing all of these things taking advantage of the pause and now that that pandemic pause has really been lengthened and um, has drawn on, uh, how now maybe that pause feels less fresh, feels less refreshing, feels um, maybe even a sense of stress and a burden has now been placed on us as a result of this pandemic pause. Yeah, I remember too at the very beginning of this where people were like, oh, finally I get a chance to clean out that closet and go through my clothes or I get to, um, you know, finish a whole book, you know, in the beginning, I think it, it maybe was a little more welcome. 
And I just wonder how folks are doing now as it has continued. And there's been so many disappointments. There's been so many cancellations and things that we were looking forward to that we couldn't attend or, um, or we do look forward to and then, oh, things get changed. No, you, sorry, you can't come to that either. And so I do think there's so much going on, especially in this constant state of uncertainty where we're unsure and we're getting mixed messages and the messages we are getting are changing day to day. And so I wonder how folks are doing with their pause and, um, and, and thinking, you know, what, what could we do different? I asked a gentleman the other day um, how it was going for he and his family. And his answer was, well, I think we're okay. We've got the right amount of anxiety and depression going on. And I thought, yikes, you know, he was sort of being tongue in cheek and funny about it, but I thought there is a lot of anxiety and depression going on. And so more than ever, I think we need to um, step into maybe some new ways of handling our pause. So that last definition that Kyla put up there um, was number three for the kind of extended respite or pause, hiatus, however you want to say that. And I think uh, intentional living more and more is um, what I'm trying to do with my own life. So how can I be intentional with the seven days I have in front of me for this week? Or how can I be intentional with these 24 hours I get um, to actually schedule some time for pause, for a rhythm in my life where I know whether it be um, first thing in the morning or at noon like this to, to stop and to consider how am I doing, um, how am I feeling, what do I need to change, and, um, and then maybe weekly, right? Maybe there's a weekly rhythm we can establish. But one thing I know is that if you don't schedule it and if you're not intentional about it and you don't think it's a priority, it doesn't happen until you're forced to take one, perhaps for health reasons or other things like that. So what I uh, have been encouraged in my life and what I try to encourage others to do is find out what it is that restores you. So sometimes when we think of a pause, we think we have to just be still and we have to sit in a chair and we have to look out a window. Well, maybe it's taking a walk. Maybe it's going on a kayak ride, which is my favorite thing to do, or a run or whatever it might look like. But experiment with some things. What I do for a pause doesn't have to be what you do. And um, try something. And if you're in a rut, try something new. Experiment with something new that find out what it is that refreshes you in that space of rest or pause. And then schedule it and practice it. You know, Do it um, over and over again. And then you're, you'll start to crave it. And you'll start to know, whoop, I need it. I missed it yesterday and the day before. I need to get back in that rhythm again. I think is, Go ahead. <laughs> I think, you know, especially as we, you know, kind of think back to how we are living in the state of a pandemic and this extended pause is perhaps now that environment that we're in is not, doesn't feel like a pause anymore, right? And so we still actually have to do this. We still ha have to build in the rhythm and build in the practice of, of still carving out that niche of space for whatever it is that allows us to, to take a break and to step away from whatever it is that's, uh, that's making us, ah, right, get to that point. So it's like, how can we how can we find a way to build it in so that then we're not getting to that point of, well, I'm about to lose my mind if I don't take five minutes. Um, but we can actually build in this rhythm so that it becomes something that's that's normal and that's regular um, for us to do. And um, yeah, like, see, it's always hard for me when we're together presenting because she's my mom, right? And so it's like, do I call her Amy? Do I call her mom? It's so hard. So, I mean, I'm gonna call her mom because that's what she is. <laughs> um, but like mom said, she likes to go kayaking, right? And for me, when I'm not days away from giving birth, I, I like to run or I like to um, be by water or I like to go on a walk and, um, or like to read a book, you know, sometimes your pause can be, um, 
can be something that is like mindless, like that allow you just a chance to, to just exit whatever it is that's going on and, um, and take a little bit of that time to kind of just recalibrate and reset. Yeah, for sure. And also when, when we'll, we'll touch base on this a little bit later, um, but for those moments that you are captured by the beauty around you or by something disturbing. I mean, one of those pictures up there, was, you know, it was by a homeless man or, or maybe it's been the, the angst and the stress and the pressure you've seen with all of the racial inequality and all of the need for justice. And so those moments too, um, we have to not zoom past them, right? Go ahead and, and be in that moment and, and consider how is the, how am I feeling about this and what maybe could I do? to help or, or make a difference. So we've got just a personal reflection question there for you. And that's just, how are you doing at pausing? Um, how's it going for you? And if you wanna drop a note in the comment section, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, Kyle and I like talking to each other, but it would be kind of neat to know <laughs> what you're thinking out there and just, how's it going? Um, are you in a rut? Are you appreciating that time to really notice? I. Uh, have been noticing um, more birds lately. And I don't know if that's a pandemic thing or not, but just the the sound of the birds, you know, and to, to pause and notice that. Like mother, like daughter, I just sent you a Snapchat the other day of all of the birds at our bird feeder that I was noticing. <laughs> right? I think you brought up a really good point though about, um, about, pausing and sitting in those moments that are difficult too. You know, I think a lot of this, um, this topic and this conversation can be really like um, self care and making us feel good and things like that. But I think that idea of, of sitting in your feelings is, is really important and allowing feelings to come and allowing um, yourself to really kind of normalize the feelings and um, whether those feelings are things that we would associate as positive or things that we would associate as negative, but um, allowing yourself to, to feel the feels, I think that was a, a good add on. Well, I also feel like, and right now, there's not a lot of, I mean, it stinks to not be able to visit with people. I didn't get to see my parents because of COVID and it's, it's hard and it's okay to not be okay with what's going on around us. It's okay to express you know what it really it really is really difficult to not be with the people i want to be with and not um always be so concerned if you know have i done something that endangered me or someone else today and like it's hard and it's okay not be okay with it it's okay to be disappointed and frustrated um yeah and then what do we do with those feelings right We'll touch on that a little bit too. So yeah, yeah. our pausing can definitely be space for us to consider these bigger ideas or these bigger feelings um, for sure. So what comes after this pause typically for me at least, and what I would encourage is um, this idea of just taking a breath and breathing. I think they really go hand in hand um, and just want to just really briefly touch on a little bit of sciencey stuff. Um, we have this nerve that maybe you're familiar with, some of you. It's called the vagus nerve, and the vagus nerve runs through our body. It's the longest nerve in the body, and it impacts the most things in the body. And you'll notice that it runs right through the diaphragm. That second arrow is showing you there how it runs right through the diaphragm. And so our vagus nerve is really directly connected to our breath and informing our body um, of, of what's going on. Here's just like a couple little, just a little tidbits about how the vagus nerve affects the organ systems. And I just highlighted some that are, I think, particularly important, which is um, it helps decrease the heart rate. It helps keep anxiety and depression at, at bay. Um, it helps lower blood pressure. So when we're really being intentional with how we're breathing, we really have an opportunity to control our physiological state. And so I think a lot of times, you know, when we're either getting to the point where we need to take that first type of pause, right, that, that 
quick interruption to our blah, um, it's typically because our, our we're overwhelmed, right? And we're feeling maybe that stress and anxiety. And um, so for me, I need to pause and then I need to breathe. Mm-hmm. And um, when we're exploring these other areas of pause too, I think breath still goes hand in hand, right? We're, we're captured by a moment and oh, wow, we need to pause and we need to breathe to take it all in, to process it. And so I'm going to teach you, this is just a really um, simple, basic breath strategy. And I would say it's foundational. Um, we're not going to make it complicated here today. Uh, this is really a foundational strategy. Um, and so as you're watching, I'd invite you to to take a hand on your chest and then place a hand on your belly. You kind of see my, <laughs> my belly here. Uh, a hand on your chest and a hand on your belly. And as you breathe in, you actually are expanding the belly. And as you breathe out, let me see if I can get even a better shot here. You might notice that my hand comes in a little bit lower. So as I breathe in, And out. In. And out. So this idea of taking those deep breaths and really activating that diaphragm, maybe you've heard it called diaphragm, diaphragmatic breathing or belly breathing. Um, this is a strategy that's great to use for yourself personally. It's a great strategy to help kids understand. Um, and it's just such a simple tool that you have always readily available to you to help your self reset your system. And that's really what this does is it is it resets your system. And I always say three deep breaths is a good place to start. More is always better. Um, we love to tell the story of um, my mom was presenting uh, at our church once and she was a little bit frazzled. And I said, Mom, why don't you take a deep breath? And she did. And then I was like, why don't you take one more? And she did. And she was like, okay. And I was like, you should take one more. And she did. And then she was like, oh, all right, I'm good. That three deep breaths really acts as a reset for the system. Um, this is something you can do when you're driving in the car when you're sitting at your desk, when you're um, standing washing dishes, I mean, truly anything, uh, any place, anytime, this breath is accessible to you. And um, I find it to be the one that I go to the most um, when I take my pause to allow myself that reset. You know, uh, it's so interesting to me. I when Kyla and I started doing this and I thought I was taking breaths properly, but I was so up in my chest with these little shallow breaths. I was like, I don't get it. And then, but man, to, to really, to put that hand on my chest and my belly and to have my hand go out and in with my breath is almost the only way until I've gotten better at it to know if I'm doing it right. And a lot, you know, a lot of people do a deep breath and they make their shoulders go up, you know, they didn't get a deep breath. They, got a shallow chest breath, <laughs> but, um, and I've watched Kyla do this with her kids. I've watched her uh, help them calm down. And I also have the privilege of teaching uh, little two-year-olds in preschool. And, and it is amazing. You know, they get so riled up with their little emotions and they don't know what to do, but, and, and in speaking to little ones too, you know, to, to smell the flower and to blow out the candle, <laughs> that helps us, reminds us to go in through the nose and out through the mouth, um, which is something we take for granted, right? You would think breathing, <laughs> we all do it all the time. But man, when you get anxious or you sometimes forget to ho- how to breathe and you've noticed, oh, I'm holding my breath. I'm so nervous or anxious, I'm actually holding it. So I've really, really appreciated, and Kyla has taught me so much about breath and things I didn't know I needed to learn. So. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting, you know, this idea of once you get involved with your breath in terms of once you start thinking about what you're actually doing and the way that you can kind of harness that. And if you're noticing that maybe yours is opposite, like maybe your belly goes in when you breathe in um, instead of out, um, it's okay. You know, it's something that you can um, 
that you can work with and that you can kind of slowly adjust to. And um, I think the biggest idea is to not, you know, force your body to a place that feels uncomfortable, even if it is something as simple as taking three deep breaths. Sometimes our um, individuals who maybe have experienced some trauma in their lives have uh, noticed that their breathing maybe is a little bit reversed or is different. And so just being aware of that in yourself and um, if you're finding that, hey, my breath doesn't quite match up with what you're saying, um, to to know that that's okay and to um, to not make that be a place of stress or anxiety to um, to think, oh, I can't even breathe right. You know, no, <laughs> certainly not. Certainly not. Um, you're still able to take those deep breaths um, as you are. Absolutely. Thanks for that. So we've talked about pause and breathe, and so now for appreciate. We're gonna look at some more definitions here. And uh, the first one says to recognize the full worth of. So to admire or value, treasure or respect something, right? Recognizing the full worth. And then just simply to be grateful, to be grateful for something, to be thankful for something. This is, I know, kind of a buzzword and kind of it gets a lot of attention. I think the reason it gets a lot of attention is because there's a lot of truth behind it. So uh, there is there is a connection between being thankful and being content. There is a connection between uh, folks that are better at looking for ways to be thankful and grateful in the moment. They are able to be happier, more joyful, more in the present, um, all of those things, which also helps us to pause, right? You have to pause sometimes to be thankful and you have to kind of remind yourself especially lately, you know, uh, we talked about a lot of those disappointments, but man, you can always find something to be thankful for, even if it's that you're still breathing. <laughs> so even in that, we can be grateful and thankful. There's this quote by a man named William Ward, and he says this, that feeling gratitude and not expressing it is like wrapping a present and not giving it. So there's one piece of it to feel it, to feel the appreciation or gratitude. And then there's a next step to express it, whether it's to thank someone that you're with, um, tell them what you appreciate. What do you value about them? You know, uh, write the thank you note, send the text, keep a thank you journal, whatever that might look like for you to start learning how to express your appreciation. So... There's this quote um, by a woman named Melody Beattie, and it's probably one of my favorite quotes, and it's it's a lot, but I'll read it here um, and just kind of allow you a chance to, to just sort of marinate in, in her wisdom here. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. It turns denial into acceptance, chaos into order, confusion into clarity. It turns problems into gifts, failures into success, the unexpected into perfect timing, and mistakes into important events. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, and we share that quote just because I think it I mean, really, it's like you can't you can't say it better than she said it right here in terms of really how powerful gratitude is and how powerful um, feeling this deep sense of gratitude can be to really shape and um, to shape our perspective and to shape how we're showing up in our day to day lives. And um, so this has been something that's been really important for me. And even as I was reading it right now, was reminded of how who I've had some things going on lately and I haven't really been, I've been pausing and I've been breathing, but I've been kind of missing this uh, appreciate piece. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, just really thinking about, um, for me, the piece that really stood out was the unexpected into perfect timing. I've had a lot of things that have been really un unexpected mm -hmm. and a lot of things that have been chaotic and confusing. And so those things um, were a good reminder for me here today. So <clears throat> how are you doing? <laughs> we, uh, we want you to take a minute and just consider that. 
uh, how are you doing at expressing gratitude, appreciating not only um, what's going on in your life, but appreciating who you are. We need to appreciate um, ourselves too and be kind to ourselves. We are really hard on ourselves with our negative thoughts that we spin around or I'm not good enough or I didn't do that well or all that kind of stuff. We need to kind of stop that, pause that and appreciate ourselves too. Appreciate those you're living with or where you work, your surroundings or circumstances. So we just want to uh, see if we can get you to drop a number in the comment section. Or if you're watching this later, go ahead and draw out a continuum, right? And on one end, put a one where, you know what? I forget to be thankful. I'm not good at this. I'm really down here at, at a one. And then draw your line to a 10. And the 10 would be, man, I'm all the time I'm grateful. I'm really rocking this part. And then a five right in the middle. Eh, I sometimes remember. I remember to maybe think about it, but I don't really do anything with it. I don't express it to anybody. So where are you on that continuum from one to 10? And if you're brave enough to drop a number in the comment, that would be awesome and we can see that, uh, that you're with us. <clears throat> but I guess if I had to answer that for myself, um, I think I might, might put myself right around a seven, seven or eight, somewhere in there. How about a 7.5 <laughs> to be generous? <laughs> Where are you at, Kyla? If you had to put a number on it today, what would you say? Man, today I'm at a five or maybe even a little bit lower. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's hard. Um, I think, you know, kind of as I was alluding to earlier, when you've got so much going on and when things are going um, differently than you expected and, um, you know, expectations for things are having to change and all that. It's some, it's hard sometimes to remember to still be grateful and to find, um, to find those things to be grateful for. So I would say, um, I'll give myself a 4.5, he took 7.5, I'll say 4.5. Although I did make sure that I was very grateful to the plumbers who fixed my DIY um, under the sink plumbing job that was leaking a little and they came and they were like oh we'll just we'll just clean that up for you and i said thank, thank you <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> well and don't you think that it's it's day by day but i think more especially during this time that we're in it's like moment by moment or morning like if i checked in in the morning the afternoon and the evening yeah. i would give myself a, a different number at each one of those times and yeah. I think that that's one of the important pieces of taking the pause and the deep breathing is so that we can express gratitude and be thankful because otherwise it stuff is changing so fast and it's so hard right now that we can forget the benefit of, of being grateful. Yeah, for sure. Pausing and breathing really kind of paves the way for allowing us to, um, to find those moments of gratitude. Yeah. A few years ago I was given up, a birthday gift and it was a book. It's called um, 1000 Gifts. Uh, the full title is A Dare to Live Fully Right Where You Are by Ann Voskamp. And um, I was given the book and I was also given a small journal with it because in the book, the author was challenged by a friend. Do you think you could think of 1000 things you're thankful for or 1000 blessings in your life? And the author took that challenge and she wrote this book. And so the journal that the friend gave me was for me to take the challenge and write down, um, try to get to a thousand. So I took the challenge. I didn't worry about how many times a day I wrote in it or that I had to do five a night or anything like that. I just kept it nearby. And when that, whenever I thought of something, I jotted it down. I think it took me, if I remember right, the first time I did it was over a two year period. And I reached a thousand and I've started a new one. And I think I'm at 750. And um, what it forced me to do in a, in, by forced, I mean, in a good way, uh, what it allowed me to do was to get really specific about expressing my gratitude. So instead of just, I'm thankful for a nice day or I'm thankful for the sunshine, I got to get really granular in my thanks. You know, I'm thankful for the giggle of my granddaughter or I'm thankful for getting to hold a tiny little hand in my hand, you know, just really specific. 
And so then I started looking for things. Like I started looking, what what can I be grateful for today that I can write into my journal? And um, it was a really good challenge. In fact, I do believe that it led me, it's one of the reasons that I wrote the book that I wrote, which is Snapshots and Stories, um, Increasing Awareness of God's Faithfulness Through the Practice of Journaling, because there's something powerful about writing things down. One of the benefits is you remember them. <laughs> One of the benefits is I can look back over my journal of gratitude and be like, oh, yeah. And man, to have that many things to page through that you're thankful for, it really does help um, bring about more contentment. So write to remember. Hashtag write to remember. <laughs> or if you... Uh one a little bit one that's a little bit more wordy right i used to always tell my students if you don't ink what you think you'll stink <laughs> write it down write it down write it down <laughs> so all things change when we do this was something i learned um in my coaching when i was um getting my coaching certification and when i would work with my coach she would just say this to me over and over again. All things change when we do. So what are you willing to change, right? And the only person that we can change is ourselves. So we can't can't change my circumstances. I can't get rid of the pandemic. I can't make someone happier that lives with me. I can't do any of those things, but I can change me. And I can have control over my attitude and how I appreciate um, those around me and who I express it to. So the truth is to to think about that is to what am I willing to do differently? And what am I willing to try, right? Maybe it doesn't work, so maybe I can try something different. But what are, you know, what are some things that I could do? Well, I could send a text and tell the person what I am thankful for about them. I can write the note. I can write in a journal. I can do all those things. I can put a post-it note on the mirror by my husband where he wakes up in the morning and let him know what I'm thankful for about him. Uh, there's so many creative ideas that we can do, um, but truly all things change when we do. So so now we'll pause <sighs> and we'll breathe. <laughs> so this next strategy that I would like to share with you is, um, again, just another um, another tool you can stick in your toolbox um, in terms of utilizing your breath to help um, to help regulate your system and it's this idea of breath counting so again this is sort of a basic strategy one that hopefully is easy to remember um, and it it works with those deep belly breaths that we already uh, learned or explored at the beginning and um, this time you're just being a little bit more intentional in terms of actually counting out the breath. So sometimes for me, I'll find that if things are um, like going really crazy in my life or, you know, maybe my anxiety is is really heightened, that just simply taking the breaths, like, that's not cutting it. <laughs> and so it's like I need something else to do with my mind while I'm breathing. And so this is a strategy that I like to use um, so it's like a, it's like a level up strategy if you need something that's a little bit more um, to get you kind of to that place of back to homeostasis. Um, and so all you're doing here is you're just counting the length of your inhale and then the length of your exhale and making sure that they match. Um, so if you've been doing this for a long time or you feel that you have the capacity to really fill your lungs, maybe you count to that five. Um, I normally count to three or four. Um, and then exhale, matching that count. So again, if you're here joining us and you'd like to give it a try, um, take that inhale, count in your mind, one, two, three, and then as you exhale, one, two, three, inhale, two, three, exhale out, two, three. Inhale and exhale. And then just continue this as long as you need until you can feel the body start to come back to a place of calm, come back to a place of, um, 
of being regulated. Uh, and again, this is just um, a pretty simple strategy that you can use and you can utilize. And um, again, pretty accessible. You don't have to be, um, you can be doing anything and still be doing this at the same time. So um, yeah, so we'll move on and talk about um, appreciate a little bit more. So there's a psychology term, and I believe Carl Rogers is the one that um, first started this idea, and it's called unconditional positive regard. So here's the definition, and I'll say it a couple times, so we don't have a slide for it, but it's accepting and respecting others as they are without judgment or evaluation. Let me say it again. To practice unconditional positive regard, is to accept and respect others as they are without judgment or evaluation. So here's what is uh, beneficial about this. So if you practice this, if before you're gonna be on a Zoom call or in a meeting as we used to have them or whatever it might be and you know you're going into this and you know there's a couple folks in there that maybe irritate you or annoy you, you can stop for a minute and pause and you can consider just for a few seconds, what do you appreciate about that person? You gotta be able to find one thing that you can appreciate about them to accept and respect them without judgment or evaluation, and it will not change them, but it will change you. It will have, you will have a better attitude toward them and be able to just appreciate who they are. And um, it really does, it really does help just to, you know, everybody's going through a lot, right? And so instead of being annoyed and irritated, just give, give yourself a minute and, and consider this. What do I appreciate about, about this person? What can I, what can I unconditionally um, do to regard them without trying to change them or fix them? Um, but just, just find something to appreciate about them. I had a, a coworker, um, and I, her and I really we clashed, and um, there was it was a lot of it was really difficult to work with her, and um, I didn't agree with a lot of the things that she did, and uh, I was going into a department meeting, and um, and I practiced this, and the thing that I the thing that I appreciated, I was like, she has really great style and I love the way that she shows up every day with really great style and that seems so small and it seems even superficial but it allowed me to go in and to to not be dwelling in those negative thoughts of Oh, I can't stand the way she does this, or I can't stand the way that we don't agree on this, et cetera, et cetera. Um, just even by taking something silly, really, and allowing it to frame that interaction was was beneficial for me. That's awesome. <laughs> and I love this quote on this, what I think is our next slide. <laughs> uh, I love this quote. Everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about, so be kind always. And I think that that is um, that should be on a, a T-shirt or or a poster. <laughs> so um, I, we want to we want to challenge you guys with something. And this whole thought of what's one thing I can do to change um, is to challenge you to write five things down that you appreciate about yourself, and jot those down in your notebook. And then you can write five things down. Um, that you appreciate about people that you live with <laughs> or people that you work with. And, um, and then how about five more things that you are thankful for about where you live, what surrounding you, um, you live in. For instance, I live close to um, a conservancy that I can walk through. It's five minutes from my house. I can walk in it. How awesome is that? Right? So five, write those five things down what you preach about yourself, someone you work with or live with, um, and where you live, or even your circumstance, right? Sometimes our circumstances are difficult, but what can I be thankful for in this circumstance? Maybe it's something I get to unlearn 
that I've always been stuck in a routine. And now I get to unlearn that and I get to change and do something different. Then here's my action plan suggestion for you if you will accept the challenge to then think, okay, if all things change when I do, what am I willing, what's one thing I'm willing to do to express appreciation, um, to be kind to myself, or to express appreciation um, to someone I live with or work with? And then just what what is one thing I can do to express gratitude about my circumstance or surrounding? How will you begin to move up that continuum from the one to the 10, understanding we are not gonna be thankful 100% of the time, every day, all day, but if you want to grow and you want to change your attitude and change your um, contentment and be a more joyful person, this is this is one of the things that can help with that. So what's the one thing you're going to do? And then who's going to check in with you? You need somebody in your in your corner to uh, cheer you on and say, how's that going? Or even check with check in with you and say, where are you on the continuum this week? You know. Find that person to be in your corner and help hold you capable of making the change that you want to make. Um, we're not here to tell you you have to change. We're just here to um, want to help you to grow in this area so that you can uh, you can be more thankful about what's going on in your life and and be able to take those pauses with a purpose. So, you know, I think about the times when I um, am living this way and um, just. Mm -hmm how much more fulfilling life feels and how much, um, you know, it's when we live in the other space of negativity or um, comparison or um, any of those things, you know, almost it's especially like right now, it is easy to maybe feel like, wow, nothing is going to get better and things are just seem to be getting worse and we have these different things that are coming up and it's mm. this is our life and bad things keep happening and um you know once you have those negative thoughts as your frame um it gets really easy to go down that path and then um you keep seeing then that negativity and those are the things that really really grow um as opposed to if we shift our frame um, we shift our lens of focus and allow gratitude to be our lens that we're seeing life through and uh, it really has a pretty powerful effect yeah i heard this a couple times recently and i've i've also said it everything's so hard right and right now then everything's harder mm -hmm. right i mean you take a hard situation and now it's just harder and so, uh, yeah, we gotta we gotta start reframing some of those things. So yeah. yeah. Two more reflection questions for you to consider: um, Is what gets in the way of you feeling gratitude? What things are your obstacles? Right. So when you are kind of living in maybe that more negative frame of mind, why is that? What what is getting in the way of you feeling gratitude? Um, and then this other question of, well, what happens to your attitude when you compare your circumstances to others? And I think we've kind of touched on this a little bit, right? In terms of when we get stuck in this comparison trap of, you know, especially, um, now in social media, um, where you're seeing everyone else's outside lives or, um, you know, kind of best of the best that they pick to, to put on their platforms, um, and you're using that to place a judgment on their lives versus um, you, what you know to be true in your life. And it really starts to feel kind of icky. Um, and so I think that kind of goes back to that idea of remembering that everyone is fighting a battle that you know nothing about, right? So that even if that's what they're portraying, they have things going on too. Um, and just, you know, being mindful of of your attitude when it comes to comparison mm -hmm. and you know maybe your pause shouldn't be scrolling mm -hmm. through social media right like if that's not leaving you feeling better after then that's probably not the best place to take your pause um because sometimes i know that i do that like i'll be like oh i have 10 minutes i'm just gonna go on instagram for a while and then i'm done and i'm like oh all those people on instagram are so much more productive than me <laughs> 
<laughs> right? So it's like kind of finding that thing that allows you to to be in a space where um, where you can feel gratitude and also where you can express it. Yeah, I remember one of the gals that was at our workshop when Kyla and I did one of these in person, she was in her 30s and she put her cell phone away for a year. Yes. A year, you guys. She didn't use it for GPS. She didn't use it for and email, nothing, not even phone calls. She put it away and lived her life for a year without it. Instead of scrolling on Facebook, she would journal. And she couldn't believe the difference that it was making. And we were with her in early on. I'd love to check back in and see how how she finished that up. But Yeah, and even the insights that she was gleaning just from those first couple of weeks or months that she had been doing it, she said was like pretty prof profound and very insightful in terms of really yeah. cutting out that piece. You know, lots of people like to take social media breaks or fasts or whatever, but I mean, she really... She went full out, and so we were we were both pretty impressed, and um, and also feeling like, well, I don't know if I could do that, but right. she, you know, it was a great experiment for her to try, and um, really kind of opened up an avenue for her to, you know, she really resonated with this idea of, yeah, I have found myself being so much um, more aware and more present and grateful, and yeah, uh, so on and so forth, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All right, we've got a few minutes left. Yep, so we'll take one more pause and one more chance to breathe. Um, so before I introduce this last strategy, um, I just want to point out that all of the breath strategies or approaches that I've been giving you today are really to help calm the body. Um, mm -hmm. And I just think it's important to point out that our breath can also be used to um, energize or reinvigorate um, the body as well. And so um, there's a couple different ways that you can use your breath to, to awaken the system. And <laughs> maybe that's you right now. Maybe you've been eating your lunch, you've been listening to us kind of drone on for a while. And maybe you're like, whew, I need a, a little bit of a, a, a boost. Um, and so you know, even something as simple as like getting up and moving your body in in a way that gets the breath moving in a, in a different rhythm can be really beneficial. Um, there's specific strategies that we could explore. Um, and those ones are not as safe for me to do while carrying a child. And so it is why we opted to not teach them to you today. But um, certainly something as simple as getting up, walking, like, you know, my husband, he sits in front of his computer all day as he's still working from home. And so sometimes he just gets up and just walks around, walks up the stairs, walks down the stairs, um, just to get that breath kind of moving and flowing through the body. Um, so we just wanted to, to point out um, that piece too, so that you're just a reminder that the breath is such a powerful tool. Yeah. So this last strategy is um, related to breath, but also related to um, to a little bit more in terms of like mindfulness and um, and, and really kind of engaging your mind to think about um, things as you are calming the body. And uh, it's just this really simple practice called five senses grounding. Um, and it's pretty much uh, self-explanatory in terms of you're using your five senses to ground you into a present moment. Um, and so I love to do this. I do this for myself, but really this is a strategy that I've used with um, my middle daughter as she sometimes struggles with really, really big emotions and having a hard time kind of coming down from those emotions. And so we like to do this one a lot. And um, you start with your sense of sight and you just take a moment to to look around and to identify what are three things that you see in your space. So in your vicinity, what are three things that you see? And then move down the line. What are three things that you can touch? So we do hair, clothes. She has a special blanket. So a lot of times she'll feel the blanket. Maybe it's the carpet underneath your feet, the cushion of a chair, any of those things that you can touch. Um, here. I love when we get to this one, especially with my daughter, because normally she's crying during the first two. And then when we get to here, she normally will stop because we have to really tune into our sense of sound here. And so really being quiet for a moment and taking in the sounds that you hear, the buzz of a computer, the fan, a bird, construction truck, 
Um, the last two, smell. What do you smell? Maybe it's just a certain scent in the air. Or maybe you have something nearby that you could smell, a cup of coffee or tea, or maybe you have plants or things like that. And then taste. A lot of times we'll just, we'll look our lips and we'll say, what do we taste? What do we taste? And it's just a way to, um, to sort of distract the mind and to get it to focus in on what is happening in this exact present moment to really ground yourself um, so that you can, again, reset the system. It really is a great way to pause um, and then to just use those deep belly breaths as you're moving through each sense to ground yourself in a space. So again, this is a strategy that um, is great to use for either yourself, for um, if you have little ones, um, or teenagers, or really anyone. This is a strategy that anyone can use um, to help, again, re-regulate the system and um, just bring in a little grounding. That's awesome. So we are um, just about to wrap up here and really want to thank you for joining us, whether you were able to be here with us live or whether you're tuning in at another time to watch it recorded. Uh, we're appreciative for Dream Bank and the awesome work they do in our community. Uh, here are our emails. If you ever would like to contact either one of us um, just for more clarification or for coaching or for whatever, um, feel free to email us. If you're interested in um, more about my book, you could uh, purchase that as well. It's on Amazon called Snapshots and Stories. Um, it looks like this. Um, I'm pretty proud of it. It was a, a fun thing. To, they're just 30 stories from my life and a journal prompt to get you to reflect and consider uh, your own story. So um, we have really appreciated this time and the opportunity to do this with you. Our hope, if we were with you in a room together, we would want to hear your takeaway or your aha from the presentation. But um, if you want to drop it in the comments, you can. Um, our just our hope for you is that you're able to practice something that you learned today that you're able to take it and be intentional with it moving forward as you continue to pause and take deep breaths when needed and appreciate um, what's going on in your life and those in, those who are in it with you so thanks for being with us yeah thank you so much Thank you guys so much. I know I have the comments up from Facebook and a lot of people when you ask them to rate how they're feeling, it was definitely in the four, five, six range. Um, so I think that these kind of different methods will definitely help everyone. Um, so we're all very appreciate, appreciative for you guys giving that um, us. And Marina just said, thank you. This was wonderful, lots of work to do. Um, and I think we're all kind of feeling like that. So again, thank you guys so much. Um, if you ever um, are interested in watching more of Dream Bank's events, we do live Facebook events weekly. So make sure to tune into Dream Bank's uh, Madison's Facebook page um, for more of our videos. Thank you guys again, Kyla and Amy. You bet, Jenna. Thank you. Thank you.